Hello and welcome to my retro watches. My name is Mike. This episode is the next part in the Seiko 6139 chronograph series. I'm going to build the movement in this one. Um, I don't know if this has been done on film particularly on YouTube, uh, but I'm going to try and attempt it, do it for you. Now, uh, before I do start, I am not a professional. This is my disclaimer. I, I don't intend to be. Uh, I'm just um, a hobbyist. Uh, with a great big passion who likes to film what he does and I'm hoping that I can try and help and inspire and teach some of you guys uh, the methods that I've learned so far in order to try and tackle movements like this one in particular. Um, so with that bit out of the way, uh, let me talk a little bit about it. So hopefully you saw the first two videos in the series, which was the disassembly. Now the, the movement that came to me was uh, from a guy called Jeff was in quite poor condition. It was uh, very sad, very dirty, and it took three to four washes actually, or cycles through the ultrasonic and actually through the wash cleaning machine to, in order to get the parts to what I would deem acceptable. However, there was some damage to one part. There was the part that was missing, which was the uh, the minute recording wheel, if uh, if you remember. And that, put, that posed a bit of a problem. Now Jeff's got a brother and his brother had a donut movement and he sent that to us and when that arrived unfortunately it was missing some of the parts we did need um, but there was a part that I used in the end which I will talk about in just a moment. But first of all so there is a little tip I want to say before we start because this video I'm just going to be building the whole thing but if you're going to follow along to this it's quite important or I think it's important that you build just the, uh, the, the the train of wheels, put the barrel in, put the train bridge on, uh, put the ratchet on, and then actually you've got to put the chronograph bridge on just so it'll hold the, the, the chronograph wheel, and then put the balance on and make the, the watch run. Just like you'd do on a normal service really for a normal watch. Make sure that the train's working well and uh, you can test it on the timographer if you've got one. And therefore you are uh, ensuring that that works first because if you just steam ahead and then you build all the, the the chronograph works on the top the chances are if there is a problem you might overthink it and think it's the chronograph or something else your fault diagnosis can take ages uh, when reality is we're just doing a step by step so try and do it as a normal watch to start with if you're happy and it's running okay then we can proceed to the next part but of course what i'm going to do is just build the whole thing so that i can just film it i'm anticipating because I do everything off the cuff, that this video is going to be quite a lengthy video. So get yourself a cup of tea, get yourself a beer, sit down and relax. Now, uh, just one thing. So using that method uh, of uh, rebuilding the, um, the the train, that is exactly what I did to, to Jeff's watch. And what I found was a big problem. And I'm going to put a, another screen up now and I'm going to sort of talk you through the problem that I found. And boy, was it worth doing that to start with, because otherwise I could have had a lot of problems later on. So I'm going to flick to that now. And then after that, we'll go back onto the bench and we'll start properly with this assembly. Right then, here you can see the problem. Uh, the original balance wheel is absolutely buckled and bent. You can see it wobbling there. I'm not very good at diagnosing these, but it's enough to know that that was going to be no good. Uh, I put it on the timographer all the same. And uh, but let's see what sort of a reading we were going to get because uh, you never know, um, it's just out of curiosity more than anything else. And here we go, this is the reading we got now. That is quite spectacular, uh, it's almost Picasso like, isn't it, in its appearance? Um, however, Jeff's brother's watch, uh, I took the balance out of, and here it is on the screen. Trouble is, that was really dirty, and those coils were stuck together with glue, believe it or not, and that took an absolute age to clean off. But when it did, I put it on the movement, and as you can see there, it's running quite flat. And up on the timograph. Okay, amplitude is not very good, but I haven't oiled a thing, and uh, I still wanted to do another clean. But the lines were straight enough for me to think actually that's okay and here we go there's a bit of a slow-mo um, you know that's got reasonable amplitude and i think we've got potential certainly when i hadn't even oiled any of the jewels there so all in all pretty good result and from this point onwards i figured i could get on and continue this build okay here we are looking at the main plate and that is the uh, barrel arbor and these suffer greatly from going oval 
uh, you can see it is worn uh, quite a lot it doesn't look too oval to me mind um, however in a normal world if you were someone a bit better than I you would um, bush that out and uh, jewel it uh, that seems to be the common practice on these uh, unfortunately I have not learned that skill yet so uh, we're just gonna have to make do I can just see something there um, anyway I wasn't really going to do that you can just see a little bit more as well what I've had to deal with so it is quite it was quite dirty it is as clean as it's going to be and a lot of battle scars uh, uh, from where corrosion has been uh, but we have to as I say live with that um, now again just before I start um, I'm going to leave a link down below to the service manual. Uh, now the service manual is for a 63, uh, sorry, a 6139A, but there's very, very little difference uh, to the point that it's only really one wheel that's different to an extent. You can't swap a lot of the parts, mine, so don't um, misrepresent what I'm saying. Uh, but certainly, it'll give you a good guide for where to oil and uh, how things go together. So. Um, this video will take the usual procedure, bit on the microscope, bit on the bench where necessary to try and show you as much of the oiling as I can. Um, again, I'm fairly new to this movement. This will be my fourth uh, now of the 6139. Uh, that said, uh, the first two that I did, I took them to pieces probably about 10 times in total. So uh, <laughs> there we go. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use just a little bit of uh, Mobius 9010 on the center jewel now you can put it on the wheel uh, uh, below i just like to put it on the center wheel like that and then we can offer up the center wheel like so drop that in place and then while we are there i'm just going to also oil just on the top there and that's just a tiny amount it might have been slightly out of focus for you so i do apologize if that was the case um, and the oiler i'm using is a Bergen ergonomic oiler for this one a black one so there we go that's the first bit in place so now the center wheel is in it's time for the bridge. And that just happily sits on the top there. And of course, held in by one screw. So try and excuse my fingers throughout this video. Uh, you're going to see a lot of them. Okay, once you're happy that's in, just check the wheel moves nice and free. And if it does, fantastic. Uh, I now like to put in the escape wheel while there's plenty of room. And that will just drop into the uh, jewel hole just there. And then I'm also going to install the barrel. And here's the barrel. And I just put a little bit of D5 uh, Mobius. I really need my finger cuts on. I've just realized I haven't put them on. And I just want to put a little bit on the bottom. And that will help it. It's a bit of a high friction point. Now I have serviced the mainspring already I wasn't going to show you that I don't feel that was necessary I've got a video dedicated to do doing that by hand uh, although I have now got a, a winding tool so here's the click I don't particularly like fitting these sometimes certainly not on camera uh, this little screw can be a real pain to get seated sometimes uh, but we're a bit lucky this time
so far, so good. Now I am just also going to put a tiny amount of uh, Mobius on the uh, jewel here and I'll just flip to the microscope to show you that. Okay. Just a tiny little drop is enough like that. Okay, now for the uh, third wheel. It's got a little gear on the bottom and that goes through that hole like so. And you just need to find its way. There we go, till it's sort of binding. And now it's the chronograph wheel and the chronograph wheel is the most important part of this and this has a particular oiling Let's try to get it in focus for you again it still doesn't want to do it does it and there's a particular procedure for this i'm still unsure whether i'm doing it totally correct but i'm going to try and film this somehow so first of all i'm going to go to the scope and show you a bit about what we're going to do and then i will try and demonstrate it as best i can okay here we are so we are looking at the uh, chronograph uh, wheel um, and I'll confess that uh, at this point in the video again I'm another month on maybe a bit more than that from uh, the first part that you've already watched and that is because this particular operation here of oiling the uh, chronograph wheel I got it wrong and I actually managed to break the chronograph wheel which almost uh, brought me to tears because it's the most expensive part uh, to find if you can find them and um, it was just gut-wrenching really certainly because it wasn't my watch either and um, Jeff knows about this and of course I sent my apologies um, I guess you could say I've broken a broken watch but even, even so I was absolutely mortified so I'm going to kind of show you where you oil and I'm going to show you um, what I did wrong actually to make sure that you don't make the same mistake uh, I can now continue the build because I've managed to get hold of a chronograph wheel at least to rebuild this watch and um, complete this video and then we'll see what happens with the chronograph wheel at the end of that so right what you are looking at as I say is uh, the chronograph wheel and where you need to oil I will put a picture up uh, actually I'll put a picture up now and it kind of shows you that you've got to oil it's like a bit a bit above the gear basically so and you have to push it down so we're now going to go back to the microscope and I'll show you um, what I mean so if you look carefully at the um, star or the gear should I say uh, what you have to do here is you have to get the tweezers either side of that um, shoulder there and you've got to push it down now I'm just going to double check that you're in focus because I'm not yes you seem to be and I have to get hold of that push it down only slightly hopefully you can see a little bit of movement and when that's pushed down you need to try and get your oiler so you'd need your finest oiler possible and let's just see what we can do so you'd push this down and you'd be trying to oil in between the gap which is just sort of under there now I do I don't do this on the microscope I do this under a loop uh, on my on my bench I guess if we take it out actually and turn it to one side I mean I'll show you what I've done but so you are just literally trying to get a little bit of oil underneath that shoulder there and what happened to me uh, which was absolutely uh, horrendous was that I was doing it on the bench I was pushing down on here but in my lapse of concentration I was pushing the shoulder rather than the gear and then when I was looking to get the oil underneath my tweezers slipped off hit the actual chronograph wheel now the chronograph wheel is only pressed on to the this gear underneath and it's basically come uh, unattached so I'll excuse my fingers here a little bit hopefully 
you can see that that is all over the place. Now I guess there is a way perhaps to press that back on but I am nowhere near skilled enough. Perhaps if any of you guys out there are skilled enough you could tell me how to do it. Um, but there you go that's that's how you would oil the chronograph wheel if you don't feel confident as I now don't try not to do it uh, that's all I can say um, so we're going to move on uh, back with the build for now I think I've talked enough about my mistakes uh, but and hopefully you understand where you've got to try and oil okay now it's time to fit the um chronograph wheel but first of all you just need to put a tiny bit of oil there's like a little shoulder here you'd be able to see it yeah, if you're going long so you just put a tiny drop of oil on that and then put it home like so and that is the chronograph wheel uh, in its probably its safest position now always got to be careful with the chronograph wheel because the um, axle uh, is quite long on the other side of the movement holder you've got to be careful that you don't knock that or break it in any way so make sure it's quite uh, secure in your holder and then you should be okay so i now want to put on the um chronograph bridge or the train bridge whichever one you want to call it and that is this one here And as per usual, the um, click has got in the way. And then at this point, you need to sort of get it home before you put any screws in. So make sure that all of the, the wheels are lined up. And in this case, they're not. And as you can see, it can be a bit of a fiddle. There you go, that's at home now. I can see that the escape's turning. So you want to put the screws in. And then we'll move on to the next bit. So I'll just cut while I put the screws in so you don't have to look at my fingers. Okay, screws are in place, and now I'm going to put the ratchet wheel on. And again, just tighten that up. Uh, of course, once you get to the bottom, uh, you want to just sort of hold the ratchet a little bit. And then you can get half a turn on the screwdriver just to put that extra bit of tightness onto that part. And then if we just click it over a couple of times, as you can see, the train is in place and is running okay. Um, so what to put in next? There's lots of different things we could put in next. Um, I, at this moment in time, I'm gonna put the, the pallet in because I've got plenty of room. Uh, because then we'll start uh, assembling some of the chronograph works. Um, at this point though, if you're at this point, and as I said right at the very start of this video, you want to then test your uh, watch just to make sure the train is working as it should, then you'd need to fit the, the next bridge on the top, uh, make sure it's lined up in there nicely for the chronograph wheel, and then you can install the um, the balance and the pallet and it should run as a conventional watch at that point and then you can test it on the timographer and see if you're getting good enough reasons uh, but for this video of course we're just going to steam right on so time to put the escape in okay so here's the pallet fork and the, the main jewel that we can see is the exit jewel and i'm just going to use some 941 mobius and the idea is, I've just got to try and get that in focus for me. 
just put a tiny bit on the surface there. Now the uh, manual says to also do the other jewel. Uh, I tend not to. I just do the one. Um, so that's that oiled. Now we'll put it in position. Okay, so now we've oiled the uh, pallet fork. Time to drop it into position and you just want to get it into its jewel. Like so. And then offer up the uh, bridge. There we go. So I'll just screw that in and then we'll continue. So now the pallet's installed, you can check it by just putting some winding, sorry, first of all, into the mainspring. And then if you just carefully touch the pallet fork, you should see it, it clicks from side to side uh, very, very easily. And that's a good indication. So with that out of the way, it's now time to start building some of the uh, more complex parts. And I'm gonna start with the column wheel. And the column wheel, first of all, if you remember, maybe you don't, depends if you've watched the um, disassembly video, it has this small little ring. And that fits over that post just there. And then we're going to use a tiny bit of Mobius uh, D5. And that just needs to have a little bit of oil on the outside of that ring. Now really I should be doing this in the microscope because I can't really see. And disaster has struck because the ring has now moved. This is another part that you really, really do not one to lose. Lose that? I don't know how you'd find a replacement. I don't even know how you'd find the part for that matter. If you lost it on your bench, because that's one that would go flying. So the column wheel is this uh, array, this big star thing. And that now sits on top of that ring. But of course, it's not going to sit on it very well. And that is obviously because this has to interact with it. And this is hard for me again to fill, but I'll try. So I put my screwdriver, let's just lock that focus so you can see. I try and put my screwdriver in here, in that little gap, and then just rotate it a bit. And it's enough to move that spring uh, to get it into position. There. So I was watching what I was doing, so hopefully that's come through. Because if it hasn't, I don't know how I would film that again. <laughs> and again, we'll just put the screw on. And that's the column wheel uh, installed. The, the uh, service manual suggests a lot of oiling on this, and hopefully you've um, downloaded that and uh, are looking at it as part of your build because I can't quite make heads or tails of it it's telling it tries to tell you that really you're sort of oiling every single face um, so I'm guessing you oil one or two here and there and as the uh, column wheel rotates it sort of finds its the oil finds its way around um, so I'm going to just try and have a little bit of a go with that and um, hopefully <laughs> it comes out all right Okay, so now you're looking at the uh, column wheel. And if you look in the uh, service manual, it basically tells us to oil the, um, the teeth here. So I'm using D5. Uh, and again, you know, am I supposed to oil every single one? You would assume so, but then at the same time, this gear here is going to go round and round 
and my school of thought is eventually it would travel also it then asks you to oil basically all the other faces which I'm just looking at now again so this is possibly one of the one of the parts that I'm only guessing on because to me it's not clear and you know maybe I'm doing it wrong so you can have your own interpretations if you again if you are more advanced than I am and many of you are uh, you can tell me where I'm getting it wrong here because I'm here to learn as much as you guys might be as well so I've just put some random oil on that really in the places I do want to press on with the video um, the way I also see that is this is as much as it's an integral part of the watch it is part of the, the chronograph mechanism so uh, it's not going to interfere too much in the running whereas the oil for the um, the train for instance that's got to be spot on because uh, that oil is critical to what it's doing so let's uh, carry on and fit the next few parts so the next parts to fit are the coupling levers and they go on some posts that again the, the manual suggests that we oil um, with some 9010 and this is the first post here and then the second post is this one here okay so here's the first of the coupling levers and that just drops over that post and then the second one equally goes over the post we oiled earlier and then also just need just a spot of oil in between them because they contact each other okay now they have two screws and one of the screws is a normal screw which is this one and that will go in there And the other one has a little shoulder and let's just see no there we go it's just decided to come into focus now so it's got a little shoulder on it before the threads hopefully you can see that and that is uh, because it goes right on the end of here on the coupling levers and of course that shoulder is uh, because the coupling weave levers uh, will rest on it okay so that is that part installed now I've also got to install, and I should have done this before the coupling levers really, was the little cover plate which goes in here. And there is a bit of oil in. I'm just going to double check that it can be fitted without having the coupling levers taken off, and it does. So that's nice. So I'm going to cut to the microscope, show you a little bit of oiling on that, and then I'll screw that in place. Right, as you can see the coupling lever there is still a bit rusty, and uh, that was after cleaning as well. Um, so just remember that this was a really bad movement and we have to oil the um, this is the escape and I'm using Mobius 9010 and then that is the 
the third wheel. I haven't got enough oil left. So that's those oiled there, and I'll just fit the cover, and we can move on to the next part. Right, the next part is the hammer, and this is also a um, an item we need to oil. And I'm using 9010 again, and it's these contact surfaces. And for me, this is really difficult trying to do it on film. I can't see what I'm doing really. But you'd want a little bit of oil on that one, and a little bit of oil on that one. So I've done it a bit crudely, but it shows you where it should go. And then the hammer fits into position like so. We have a few more um, parts to fit, including the very tricky springs. Uh, but we're getting there uh, now. But that is the main thing. So the next part is the minute recording wheel. And just want to put just a tiny drop. I've got far too much on my oiler. On the base of there. And it, you have to be very careful trying to get this into position. You're trying to thread a needle. in position. I'm not sure whether you saw that or not again because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and not looking at the camera. Um, so we do have, so that, that's the minute uh, recording uh, wheel. So that's the, that, the, the sub second hand uh, thing if you like. Uh, then we have to fit the dreaded springs. Now I really don't like these things, especially this one and uh, trying to film it is even worse. I'm not too sure whether I can. I probably got fairly confident on this one, only this one uh, becomes a bit tricky. And it looks to me to be uh, ever so slightly bent as well. Uh, now what I try and do is get that one secure and in place. This one I try and get into position, but I don't load the spring because I do that right at the end. Uh, once I've got that on, that where I think it is, we also have then the, uh, I forgot what we call this actually, hang on. Well, I'm gonna call it the transmission, the minute recording transmission wheel. And it's a real pig, this one on the uh, 6319B. On the A's, it's actually built into the the top plate. But you would wanna just get it into, into some rough position uh, because when I go to put the, the, the bridge on at the end, I can sort of manipulate these and get them sitting home correctly at that point. So with the springs, you've just got to be very careful because these things are going to go. And when they go, you probably never see them again. And they're quite hard to buy. And this is the bit I'm probably most nervous about. So for the big one, that has to sort of sit like that. And it's gonna go, so this, this end is gonna go between these two things. And I put that in position and I'll get Rodico. And then I can kind of turn it in a little bit more. And I want 
going to try and loop it over that and by gum this is hard doing it on camera there I'm just making sure that it's seated because the last thing you want to do is then take the rodico away and find out that it's going to spring out but it's in position which is a big relief just scoop up any old rodico that I've got in the way now I did forget actually that I am I was supposed to oil a little bit in there because this is the pusher and that moves up and down so I'll have to correct that at some point but uh, at this moment in time I think I'm on a roll and also there was a, a contact plate over here so with the other spring this is the one I worry about the most because it has to sort of loop around See, I've already lost it once there. So I have to loop around that post and that post, and then it goes around this bit here. And all I do is once I've got it into that position, I leave it. I don't try and hook it in. And to be honest with you, I'm going to set that off camera because that's worrying me now. I don't want to lose this part. Not now I've got this far. Okay, so now you can see that I've got it. So it's hanging out. Uh, but it's in its right uh, position and I'm just going to check those wheels a little bit and for the bridge I will put it lightly in position and then I'll transfer this over onto the microscope okay so what we're looking at here is the minute wheel recording and that little star wheel there which is not in its pivot and the chronograph wheel which also isn't in its pivot. I've got the, the screw holes kind of lined up and then look already that one's found its place, that one's found its place. Uh, I can't quite tell uh, the chronograph wheel. Just give it a little turn yeah so I've got quite lucky there usually this one is a bit of a hard thing to get in and um, you'd be manipulating it from here just till it, it finds its seat uh, but I've been remarkably lucky and managed to get it in all of them in um, very easily on the first attempt so I will have to oil uh, a few parts on here, which I'll do in just a sec, but first of all, I'm just gonna screw that down while the uh, going is good. Okay, that's all screwed down, so I'm a bit happier now. And over here, there's a spring, as you can see, and that has to be over the other side of this post. So I'll just try and do this on the scope, not that I would normally. I'm not quite happy with the way it's sitting, but uh, we'll test that uh, in a moment because this is not under tension either. So here's that horrible spring that you can see, and that end sort of rests on the opposite side of that. And I'm not going to be able to do that on the microscope, actually. Okay, there you can see it's now in place. I had a little bit of a, an issue because the, uh, this is the what the pusher pushes on to as you can see and uh, that got sort of stuck in there hence why that wasn't sitting properly as well uh, so I just teased it out and um, by the way this is not my scratching by the way and once it teased out of course that could engage and that would now sit as it should uh, this little bit here I'll get into this later on um, that shouldn't be it should be more bent on that end there but that 
Well, actually, it might be in a different video, let's face it. So for now, uh, I just want to oil the um, pivots. And so we have the corona wheel, and again, it's 9010. I'm going to put a little bit into that one. Now from memory, this particular one, uh, you don't oil. You certainly don't oil it on the uh, uh, 6109A uh, because it's part of the it was integral part. Um, I'm going to leave it alone for the time being. So for now, we'll install the balance and see if this thing is going to run. So it's time to fit the balance and these balance are very very long which makes for a bit of fun when fitting. There we have it guys. Sorry, I'm just in a bit of concentration there. So it is actually uh, beating and beating quite well by the looks of things. So I'll put these screws in. Again, sorry, I'm concentrating far too much. So there we have it. It's certainly running and the uh, balance looks like it's spinning very well. So it looks like it's got some good amplitude on that. Of course, I'll have to oil this jewel. I've also got one on the main plate underneath. Um, I've shown that a lot in other videos, but I'll, I'll probably show it again in, a, in just a moment on this one. I'll just do that particular jewel. I um, also want to show you the chronograph because the chronograph should now uh, actually start to work. So cut back onto the microscope and let's have a little look at that. Okay, so there we go. You can see that the chronograph wheel is turning and that means that the chronograph is actually in operation. And I can use a little bit of pegwood on where the pusher would be, which is this one here. And in doing that, I can see a stonking great big hair. Which I still can't get hold of, rather embarrassingly. Wow. Big long black hair, and I haven't even got black hair. Right, <laughs> right. Where were we? So we're trying to push the uh, pusher, and that has now made the chronograph stop, as you can see. And then to fly back would be this pusher. So I'm going to try and line that up and concentrate on there. And you probably didn't see that because it's very fast. But that span back round. Whether it's in exactly the right position, we yet to know because we'll have to put the dial on uh, to find that out. But the main thing is that with the chronograph running, the watch is ticking fine. And when it's off, because when it's actually off, it's under a bit more strain because it's like using a clutch to hold that in position, uh, it's running fine as well. So, right now, I'm going to say that this is a major success. I'm really, really pleased. Uh, so we'll just move on to doing that jewel. And uh, 
we're nearing the end of the, at least this first part because I'm now going to do this video in two parts. I'm going to do the mechanics of this side and then the dial side in another video. So I'm going to remove this jewel. I'm going to use two sets of tweezers and I'm just going to turn this. Now I'm trying to remember, I may have already oiled this jewel to be fair because if you remember we had the uh, wonky um, wheel at the start in the previous, well when I was trying to get this thing to run to start with and when I tidied this one up I um, tested this one as well. So I may well have oiled it at that point, I just can't remember because it was so long ago. It doesn't look very clean. I mean, there we go. So remove the, the parts. Right, okay. Now I'll show you how to oil it. Okay, you're looking at the uh, jewel. And it's um, 9010 again. adequate. Sorry if it's a bit out of focus. That's the sort of droplet size I think you should be looking for. And then we get it setting. like so. I did flick it a bit. I've actually got it in a little plastic um, container here as well to prevent it from flying away because I don't like doing this on the microscope. So you can see there there's a nice uh, oil circle and then replacing it is as it was for fitting. Uh, what do I mean? It was the same as how we took it apart not how we were fitting it. So just offer that back up. Nightmares do happen, certainly with these little shock springs. There we go. That's all fitted. Of course, I've got to do the one on the other side. I uh, won't uh, film that for now. Uh, so there's only one last thing to put back on the movement now, and that's the um, automatic framework. Right, it's now time to put the automatic framework on. And um, the hard work at this point is pretty much done. So this fits with the gear down into that hole make sure it drops down correctly and that is the pull lever is going to move that when the weight goes round and that winds the ratchet wheel which is on top of the mainspring which of course winds the mainspring. Uh, we also have a little cover plate which to be fair I probably should have put on first. And there we go. And then this is the pull, pull lever, and um, if I remember it goes that way around, but it can be quite awkward. Now the reason they're awkward is because you have to first of all oil 
with some D5. The pivot down here. And I'm going to put a bit, quite a bit on here, and there's a reason for that. And that is because the pole lever has to be dropped on like so, and then it has to sort of stay in position while you turn it the other way up and get it on to the movement. So the oil is going to hold that in position and you can, probably best if I've done that on the microscope, you can oil on this side uh, but you've got to be a little bit more careful. So I'm then going to pick that up. Turn it upside down. And then find its screw holes. We can sort of screw it in, but we'll also need to put the um, paws actually onto the ratchet wheel there. So I'm just going to loosely screw these in. And then I need to engage the pole lever. One way to test that as well is just to put a little click onto onto the mainspring there. I need to have a bit of a closer examination on that to microscope just to make sure. Right, one of those wasn't in right, and now. You can hear it sounds a lot better. So it's my bad. I should have put it on the microscope straight away. Uh, you need to inspect these a bit closer. Uh, I'm sitting a mile away. Um, a little bit of D5 will do you some good on the threads of these. Again, I would be doing that under magnification uh, or under a loop. Um, I can't do any of that because my uh, camera's in the way. But at this point, I think we're going to call it a day on this video. I'll um, stick it on the timographer at the end here. Haven't uh, regulated it or anything, so um, we'll see how good it's running. I'm amazed that I've got to the end of this video. It's uh, it's taken a month, maybe two months, to get to this stage. Um, I was dreading it because it's it's a fairly straightforward movement to do. Uh, it's just not very straightforward to film. I'm dreading editing this as I'm speaking here now because editing I've probably got maybe 30 odd clips to go through and uh, get those right. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you've watched this, you've enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you can also follow along to it because I don't really think there's many videos, if any videos out there, of the assembly of this particular movement. So if it's helped, then please uh, give me a like. Um, likes mean everything because the Google algorithm works on those and uh, puts my videos in front of more people and I get a bigger audience. So please give me a like. Please leave plenty of comments below. I will read every single one of them and I'll try and reply to as many as I can. Don't forget guys, I am not a professional. Um, if you've got questions, I'll try and answer them as best I can. If you've got criticism, please be nice. Um, 
I'm here to learn as well so perhaps if I've done something wrong you can tell me uh, and I can um, amend my ways so to speak um, so that's it uh, please check out the Facebook group retro and vintage watches and restorations um, plenty of us in there I'm in there every single day posting away and uh, so you can see me in there if you want and see the watches I'm posting and the projects I'm working on um, it's full of uh, lots of different people there's 7,000 or more watch lovers in there so please come along and enjoy the fun and I'll be along very shortly with the next video which will be the assembly of the calendar works uh, the dial how to put the hands on and then we'll recase this one and hopefully that will be the end of this watch i'm glad to see the end of it in many many ways i'm still just stunned to be fair to be at this point in the in the video that i've actually done the most complicated part so anyway i'm waffling so catch you again in the next one thanks very much bye for now